In this last video introducing the 8000S, AudioLab 8000S, before I change the capacitors, in this video I want to uh, focus on the circuitry, how it is built. I'm not an expert in electronics, but I can sort of understand by now sufficiently to explain what we see here. And I want to also comment if this is a good choice for somebody that is starting in the hobby of changing capacitors or if this project is slightly uh, difficult. The first thing I will mention that makes it different to other amplifiers is <clears throat> it doesn't look like the intention is to take out the circuit board. As you see the circuit board covers all the amplifier from corner to corner with the exception of the toroidal transformer. It's the largest piece of integrated circuitry in an amplifier that I've seen so far. Taking this thing out is probably going to be a pain. It looks like it has been built in layers and layers and layers and as the amplifier is finished that's it. <clears throat> but hold on, no problem. Two things that are very nice of this amplifier particularly in the area of the replacing capacitors. Quite often on the board you will see text indicating the specifications of the capacitor. So you don't even need a technical diagram. You don't even need to constantly be uh, moving around with a loop or an, uh, a light to see the prints on the capacitors to know what you are replacing. They are written on the board itself. It's not the only electronics that I've seen that do that but I've never seen it so consistent. Look at the density of this board. <clears throat> there are areas where it is so dense with resistors that there is hardly no place for text but the engineers always try to find some place to put the characteristics of the capacitor. The other thing that is of interest is, is if we turn the amplifier around It really weights a ton, like I said on the other videos, and it's always very confusing because it weights way more on the side of the toroidal transformer than on the opposite side of the amplifier. I know a lot of amplifiers obviously have more weight on one side because of the transformer, but this is the only amplifier where I always forget how unbalanced it is. It is just way clear, heavier on the side of the transformer than on the rest of the board, despite that the whole thing is built like a tank, there is more weight on this side. By far, I haven't had that with Japanese amplifiers, because quite often the heat sink compensates a little bit the weight in the center or in the opposite side, but on this amplifier, it's just all sitting on that side. But the circuit, do you see those circles? These are the capacitors, sorry, those are not capacitors, these are capacitors. When you see that the circle is flattened on a side, it means a transistor is sitting on the other side. So I can very quickly identify where are the capacitors to desolder them and take them apart. The only problem that I see is some capacitors that will be close to the edges. As you see, there is this 90 degree bending. So I will have a little bit less space for the desoldering and the soldering tool. Uh, but thankfully there are not that many capacitors close to the edges. So generally speaking it will be a fairly easy job um, yeah, to change all the capacitors in the amplifier. Because I won't have to t uh, turn on and off uh, the side of the amplifier to look where in the circuitry I am. Just look for the circles and even the size of the circles gives you a hint of which capacitor you are working on. And on the other side, you also see a lot of the specifications of the uh, resistor. So yeah, fantastic. This is a very well documented board so that you don't need or hardly need a service manual. Back to this side, let's continue talking about the circuitry. So a lot of transistors with heatsink and there are a couple of um, pages on um, 
internet that talk about those four resistors in here. And sometimes also some same specification resistors on these two sides here. But particularly the center ones, these four seem to be the ones that always go away. And it has to do apparently that the amplifier um, has a bit too much power for um, how it was designed. So too much current go through these resistors. Two suggestions from the internet. One is to replace them with resistors that uh, can, um, can manipulate more watts. And that is not hard to find. I had a look in the internet. These ones apparently are around four, uh, 0.25 watt capacity, which it exceeds. That's why they get a bit darker and they start to get brittle and um, ultimately will self-destroy. You can find them all the way into one watt or two watts. The other thing that they recommend is to lift them so that the underside of the resistor is not against the circuit board, which will, by the way, also damage the circuit board. Um, but it also impedes uh, the heat dissipation. So by floating the resistor a bit higher, you help it to dissipate heat. So I was thinking of replacing those four resistors um, with heavier ones that then I will put much higher on the board, probably opening a little bit um, like um, like uh, the tail of a bird, opening a little bit the resistors to the outside so that the heat between them is also uh, dispersed. <clears throat> now, if you watched the previous videos, I've said that this unit comes from 2000 five to 2008 around that era so why am i replacing the capacitors already on this uh, amplifier you will see that it has uh, even some elna serafine uh, in here very good capacitors you will find some elnas also close to the power amplifier however the rest of the circuitry has been built with some capacitors that are from a brand in I think it was Taiwan <clears throat> or Hong Kong. And the ones with 470 uh, microfarad, these ones have bulged fairly soon, actually. I uh, suspect that it was just, uh, there are, uh, I think, three or four on the board. And almost all of them show this uh, bulging. There is a very similar one, 470, but for um, more voltage. These ones, uh, there is also like one, two uh, of them. They look fine. I'm going to replace them all, however. I've never heard about this brand. I'm going to replace them with more reputed brands like uh, Rubicon or maybe Nichicon, uh, Elnas. We will see what, what I find to replace them. will be a nice project. There are not particularly many capacitors in this integrated amplifier, so it won't be a very intense job uh, as I had, for example, with another project that I did recently, a Denon or a Maranz ampli pre-amplifier that also had tons of capacitors. It's not the case here. I also think that I will leave the uh, Elna Serafine for another 10 years in the board. And under this cover, which makes it again a project maybe a bit intimidating for a beginner, you have to desolder on the underside the feet of this cover to be able to take it out and replace barely two capacitors. It's only two capacitors. You will find the specifications of one of the capacitors here. If you bend a little bit the cover to the inside, you can finish reading what the text says. And it happens to be one of the capacitors that is somewhere else in the board. So it's a, um, yeah, you, you just have to repeat uh, that capacitor uh, when you acquire it. And then there is one other capacitor over here and that's the only one that I will need the circuit diagram or I will need to take off the cover to see the specifications. So as I said, all these, um, I won't call them no-name capacitors, but I will replace all these capacitors and they are particularly in the front half of the amplifier. 
And that's also why I have this theory that this amplifier might have been started to be built in UK. It also says in the text in the back, manufactured in UK, 